basic income is a solution. And for those of you who may not understand, we need to have this economic conversation. So much is focused on electoral politics, so much is focused on social and racial uh, injustice, which is important and should be addressed. But let's not forget the economic injustice uh, conversation and what has happened economically, even actually since 2008, when there was an economic downturn, a stock market crash of sorts. Uh, there was a bailout of the banks. We heard about all of that. Uh, you know, the, the too big to fail banks, trillions of dollars went to what we would now call essential businesses, right? Um, and it did uh, keep the economy, I guess, from collapsing, you could say. But uh, the big banks just got bigger. And the same kind of thing would probably happen now that we have a pandemic creating an, yet another economic crisis. Millions of people did not recover from the 2008, 2009. That's why the hope and change of Obama, it, it fell flat. It didn't work. Uh, even from a political electoral perspective, you know, there were over a thousand uh, seats of, you know, from Congress to state to local across the country that, that went Republican because all that hope and change just didn't happen. Um, and it was, there wasn't even talk of a new deal or different plans to how to help the 99%. The That's how we got Occupy Wall Street, essentially, not actually addressing the needs of the vast majority of people that were impacted by that crisis. Now, here we are with a pandemic, that in itself a public health and safety crisis. We've crossed another landmark, was it a million deaths now? We can't get everybody health care, right? And uh, Biden is uh, running for president, and he's not an advocate for Medicare for all. Um, and can't even start with that conversation. Well, how do we get everybody covered? Instead, we need to get more people covered and make sure we don't, you know, millions don't lose their coverage. Well, how about just starting with the premise of getting everybody covered? That hasn't happened. Basic income would be a way to address the income needs of millions of people. There were tens of millions of people that lost their jobs when the uh, quarantine was announced because of the pandemic. And, and the CARES Act uh, in March of uh, 2020 was passed by 100% of Congress, gave trillions of dollars, again, to central businesses. We heard about that. Well, a lot of that really was uh, the mega millionaires and billionaires who own these so-called essential businesses, supposedly essential to keep the economy going so it doesn't collapse. But as what's been happening, people that already have money, they, they, they can invest in the stock market. They just, you know, they wait for the stock prices to go down. They, they, they buy low, they sell high, that usual kind of thing. The average American doesn't participate in any of that. So where does most of that trillions of dollars go? Well, does it go in investing in businesses? Does it really help the masses, uh, the mass of people uh, that are in economic uh, dire straits more and more as the months go by? Uh, and I can see out and about just, you know, doing that more and more in my own city, you know, in Los Angeles area here, you know, things are, are the economy's collapsing, the economy's dropping. It's not, it's not increasing. Uh, we're not addressing these issues. Basic income would be a way uh, to give people some income, which they would um, put back into the system. And many people say, well, how are we going to get the money? And I would just say, if the CARES Act, the bailout of the banks 2008, 2009, the CARES Act in 2020, trillions of dollars to basically, um, to many mega millionaires and billionaires with businesses, um, that money was available. The money for, for um, nine wars, is it? worldwide since now since uh, starting in 2003 there's plenty of billions of dollars for that every year hundreds of billions actually so to say where where do we get the money for medicare where do we get the money for basic income to help the 99 percent there's your answer no discussion about that even in the 2020 electoral um, process it's not front and center. The economy, how to help the masses of people that are obviously struggling, it's just insane. Here's a poll. 
that uh, we I've I've already talked about the uh, Medicare for all polls. The vast majority of people, sixty nine percent, there's polls up to sixty nine percent of the general public, regardless of your political leaning, that favor a Medicare for all system, not expanding Obamacare, not going backwards either, but actual Medicare for all, just starting with the premise of getting everybody covered with the Medicare system. That's the vast majority of the population, but we don't get it. Say the minor, the minority that that runs the country. That's the reality of it, folks. As far as basic income, 77 of Democrats and 52% of Republicans now support an emergency universal basic income of $2,000 a month in response to the COVID crisis that comes from the appeal. The monthly economic crisis support act is a piece of stimulus legislation proposed by vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris and Senator Bernie Sanders and Ed Markey, uh, and we provide $2,000 a month to people throughout the pandemic. Well, that's a start. Uh, and you would think that the Democratic Party, especially with Biden and having Kamala Harris as his running mate, they would talk about that uh, as a way to encourage people to want to vote for them. But, uh, you know, calling this stuff far radical socialism is just ridiculous. That's not what it is. These are solutions. They're needed to address the economic crisis that's facing the 99%. I mean, because of not addressing these issues, that's how we got Occupy Wall Street. I do want to uh, briefly talk about the Green New Deal uh, that is involving various solutions as well going forward, including Medicare for All, including a form of basic income that Richard Nixon talked about, actually. Uh, yeah, the Republican president, but I won't get into the details of that. A lot of it does have to do with the science and the transition of the economy, of course, going forward uh, because of the scientific data that we have regarding the pollution, the acidification of the oceans, the melting ice, uh, the rising overall global temperature of the earth. Uh, obviously, that is going to require getting to zero emissions of fossil fuels because, you know, not just uh, the, the driving of vehicles, uh, but there's a lot of, there's methane, there's also uh, other uh, greenhouse gas impacts, right, that we have to address. Uh, and that is going to require transitioning the whole economy, the infrastructure, you know, whether you're talking about transportation, whether you're talking about industrialization, whether you're talking about agriculture, we still have to address the, the, the essential basic needs of billions of people in the process. So that's why we have to consider the Green New Deal and all of this as well. It's essential. So what is going to be next? It's going to be up to the people uh, to decide what is going to be done uh, because obviously that's all there is that's remaining. So this is some food for thought. This is a uh, Dan Nowman Nicewander for the Nowman Show. Stay present in the moment always.